Hey everybody, welcome back again for another fun Thursday animal draw along. Mine, Jen Keller, as usual. <laughs> um, this is uh, Pepper Ann, the beautiful and gorgeous and majestic bald eagle that is over at the Phillips Park Zoo. And I thought it would be really fun for the holiday to focus on this very symbolic and amazing bird. Um, so I hope your pencils are sharpened and your paper is ready. And um, yeah, let's go. Well, the first thing we're gonna start with is, of course, as always, is the head. Now you can see uh, Pepper Ann here is up in the upper uh, right-hand corner of the page. And then it's kind of has a diagonal shape, right? And so your paper needs to be vertical. And so, yeah, we're gonna start again with the head or the skull. So not a very big circle there in the upper right-hand corner of your page. And then we're gonna draw just a little line coming down here for her neck. And we're gonna kind of use that for our measurement to get the rest of the body in there. We wanna make sure we don't want this too big because eagles are very, very big birds. They're pretty huge, about six feet wingspan, I believe. So once we have that down, now we're gonna measure again our proportions, which as we've talked about before, is the measurement of how big or how small something is. So we're gonna take this and about the combination of her head and her neck, I just find with the eagle, that's easier to do that than her head because it's kind of ambiguous in there, but it's pretty distinct how how long that, that head is with the neck, with that white. So we're gonna measure, we're gonna go one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, about five and a half to six heads long, going in a diagonal, right? So we're gonna take this measurement from about the head, one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, about between five and a half and six heads, and down there in the corner like this. So now we're gonna come back and we're gonna kinda guesstimate where her body is sort of ending here because this is the, the length of the whole entire, including the tail. So, and, but her body ends somewhere in here. These wings are super duper duper long and they all attach up in here to her, her bones up in here, her wing bones up in here, which will be equivalent to our arms. So I'm gonna take this measurement approximately one, two, three, do that again, one, two, three, four, four including the head, right? So one, two, three, one, sorry guys, two, three, four, so somewhere approximately here. And this is one of these things because it's a little, ambiguous it's a little hard to tell like as we draw we might kind of push and pull it we might make it a little bigger a little smaller but yeah so now we're going to come back and map out these uh, body parts that she has so we're going to come in here and map out her um, cavity her chest cavity and we're just going to do a nice big oval instead of how we normally do when we do sort of like a chest cavity and then the hips and stuff I feel that these guys are so streamlined. In order to keep that streamlined, I like to sort of simplify it. So we're just gonna mark kind of a big oval for that body right in here, right? Big oval. We're gonna take that and then we're gonna mark down because you can kind of see some of her back here, and this is gonna be her head and her spinal column and her wings down here, but we're just gonna mark that diagonal. And it's kind of going at this sort of an angle, so we got that going. 
but this is kind of go this is sort of where her back is it goes all the way down to the tip of this tail right so we have this body mapped out don't forget about the neck and actually this oval if you see this her chest kind of sticks out a little bit more so you might want to make your oval almost like uh, no pun intended like an egg shape so it's going to be a little thicker up here at the top right and it's going to come down like that because they have these great big sort of chests that poof out so once you have that down then we're going to mark off um, actually what we're going to do next is we're going to do a quick marking for her legs that are sort of hidden underneath her wings here and she's sitting up on a perch but just so we sort of have that the legs are sort of come up here and here and then her feet are kind of sticking out here just a little lower and then they have their talons we're just going to do a couple quick marks a little lines one two three talons they have three in the front and then one in the back and you see i actually did a little mark here because when i looked at that at first i was like that doesn't look right because this is part of the rock so you can see where her foot ends and then the rock kind of begins and then her other leg is most likely on that other side all right so our next step once we get that down is we're gonna go in here and map out her wings. Um, so wings can be a little tricky, uh, but if you break it down, very similar to our alligator, if you remember with the scale, sometimes you can get overwhelming if you just look at this and you see all the feathers and the patterning and you're like, oh my gosh, where is everything? But if you start with those simple shapes and progress to more complicated, that's usually your best bet. So this whole thing here, these are her wings. This is one wing here, kind of comes up here. And then her other wing is kind of coming back here and meeting and they meet in the center. And this is her, the back of her body, if you can see that. Um, I have this other photo, actually, you can see it a little bit here. This is not Pepper Ann, this is just Random Eagle, but you can see how these wings are sort of, and then are sort of meeting together. And then this is the tail, this one is, their body is lurched a little more forward so you can see a little bit more of that distinct white tail but I thought that that was a good visual kind of gets you to understand what is happening here all right so we're gonna do a big sort of a wing shape it's gonna start out curved in the top and almost come to a point at the bottom and it, it, it meets almost right up here and then remember this is her back so it's gonna be about three quarters of the way in we're gonna have this sort of wing shape and again it doesn't actually come down to a point a little bit and it's not going to come right down to there because that's her sort of marking her um her tail feathers are down there so almost like an upside down teardrop and then we're going to kind of measure right across here you can see her other set of wings, and the other side sort of come out and come down and they meet in the, in the back over there. So there we have our basic shape layout, right? Our basic structure. And we can go in and do some erasing, but we're not gonna erase too much. We're just gonna kind of erase this back line because we don't really need that right now so go ahead and erase that and then we can erase some of this body line underneath the wing here right so get that erased so once you get that down then we're going to come back and we're going to pattern out these wings here so you're gonna come back, and so there's a lot going on with these wings, right? There's a lot of feathering. Um, and so I like to think of it as sort of a different sections, if you can break it down into sections. So first what we're gonna do is, is, is get this wing a little more accurate. I'm gonna change up my pencil here. 
So what is actually going on with this wing is it's folded up. So what we want to do is see this, I don't know if you can see this shadow here, but this is part of her wing sort of folded up and then we have a line in there. So bird wings are, are, are like our arms, but it's as if when they are at rest, it's as if your arm is kind of scrunched up, to, up together. So if you can think about it, this is her back, right? This is her shoulder. Then it comes down here and this is probably a, somewhere around here is equivalent where her elbow is. Then it folds up and this is equivalent to where her, almost like her wrist is. This is her hand and then they have these kind of long, long bones that would be equivalent to what our fingers are, right? And this is not, this is not exact anatomical. It probably comes down a little further, but that kind of gives you an idea of what is going on underneath all of that, all of, underneath all that, and to get it to kind of make a little more sense. So we're gonna come in here and we've done that. And now we're gonna pattern out these wings. So in here, we're gonna do a couple, mapping out a couple different shapes. We're gonna have our first set and these wings sort of sit on top and protect the other wings. So you're gonna kind of do an oval marking off where those are. And then we have this, these are the called the flight wings, all these down here. And I, what I can see to just make it easier for us to pattern out is there's two sorts of rows right there. So we're gonna have this row here, right? Another sort of curved line there and then this sort of the bottom. So if you get that marked out there, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna kind of mark out the rest of these. So if this, if you think about it, if this is the top feathers and this is the second row and this is the bottom, these kind of stick out and come in. So we wanna get that shape a little more accurate so these are coming out, this sort of comes out, comes in, and then these feathers, right, are coming down around here. And then we have our tail feathers, which is another line right here coming down, and those sort of come down underneath. So it's another coming right from where these the corner of where these two flight feathers meet comes down right there. And then she's got another group, actually a little bit lower, she's got another group of tail feathers right here, which I believe are the secondary tail feathers. So once you get that map down, we can move on to kind of marking out where these feathers go. And we're just gonna conquer the feathers, I think the feathering first to kind of give you an idea. And then we're gonna go up and do her, her pretty face, her beautiful face. So we're gonna come back in here and, and much like we did with our crocodile, I'm not gonna be too concerned with doing, a, uh, doing every single little feather, um, but we're gonna do so this is this one, this is. So you're just gonna kind of map out sort of scallop or a series of horseshoe shapes in there. And then they kind of come up, see that, and come around. And then these, and you're gonna kind of do the same thing here. And I'm really, really simplifying this, super, super simplifying it to make it sort of easier to, for you guys to see what's actually going on here. Because if we were to go in and pattern out all this feathering, I mean, that would probably take us at least a good hour. But I wanna give you guys a foundation. So if you wanna go back and sort of make this 
more detailed you can. Now these are some long feathers down here, right? These actually come out like this. Right? And then you've got some longer feathers here. And then we have these really long feathers down here. And actually, this kind of looks funny. So I would just not do the scalloping there and just kind of have it start there. So now we've got some basics for those feathers done. And we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna work on this face, this very distinct eagle, eagle face. Um, so what you're gonna do at first is just, we're just gonna draw a line to pattern out where that beak is, a little diagonal line coming out for their beak. And then you're gonna come back, I'm gonna map out this head, I kinda have a, sloping head, so it goes like that. And then this chest is kind of coming in, the neck is coming in and it's gonna come out. And then for our beak, I've left this open cause I wanna, I'm, I don't wanna get too complicated in here. We're gonna actually do a line out for this beak and then another diagonal line coming straight down and this, this is gonna kind of curve under, right? Then you're gonna come up underneath here and this is gonna kind of curve under this way. Give them that distinct shape. So that gives you sort of the basics. You can go ahead and erase some of this in here. And like I said, their heads kind of slope. So you might wanna, you can delve down or, or, or trim off some of that sort of bulbous curving up there for the head. And then their, where their beaks open are pretty far back and pretty low. And there, it goes at a bit of an angle. So it's gonna start, you know, like right around not quite halfway in the head, like, you know, like a little further in. And it's gonna come up and down. It's gonna have that sort of a shape. And then you can kind of come in here. It's gonna curve out and then the feathers kind of come around and outline that beak and then it's gonna kind of come under. So we have our beak shape, and then they have these nostrils, a little diagonal up here. And actually, this beak, this is even can be even a little longer, I think. So yeah. And then again, like I said, they have that kind of sloping head, so we can kind of trim down that shape now that we got our beak in there we can see a little bit better what's going on now they have really really round eyes and their eyes are kind of right above especially i believe the female i think the males their eyes are a little further back i do know that the one big difference between the males and the females you can tell the difference is um how big they are. Females are actually bigger than males because they hang out at the nest all the time and they have to feed the babies and the males need to stay lighter because they, when they have their babies, they're the ones out doing all the hunting. So here we go. We have like a very round eye, very, very round eye. And then a little tiny pupil in there. And uh, I know we talked about a little bit with uh, Bella the Otter last week, how you can kind of play with that, but birds have this very sort of distinct um, staring look, and that is really distinct for birds, and especially birds of prey also have this furrowed brow. So you're gonna wanna come in here, really either angry or full in thought. So you do kind of like a little diagonal on top of that. And then that line is gonna kind of curve up and sort of have this like 
they look either really concerned or a little annoyed. <laughs> no, so, but we definitely want that diagonal line down on top of that eye and then it's gonna kind of curve up like that. So we got that down. So we're gonna come back here and we're gonna kind of work on the rest of uh, patterning out the rest of this body. So for this back wing, what I've done uh, before and sort of my homework for myself, um, this is all very dark. And rather than patterning all that out, I would just go in here and kind of shade that. And I'm just gonna do it super quickly. But that's a little trick you can do, just sort of dis make a distinction between foreground and sort of background or the images in the front. And then you can kind of trim off that curve there. And just real quickly, you can kind of do some hatching. But what that does is that pushes that side of her body back and it makes this part kind of come up more and uh, more in the front. So we you can come back and do is we sort of have this pattern out. Oh, we forgot about her feet. Let's go in and finish her feet. So we have her feet marked out and just sort of come down here. Things have sort of grown as we drew them, but that's okay. So you're gonna just kind of want to trace around this. I think it's easier to start with this one that's coming out towards us and draw some lines around it. And then you kind of want to do a curved line and they have their talons. I'm going to do this dark triangle shape kind of coming out and pointing around. And then again on this one, it's coming out straight. And this one is kind of bending over the rock a little bit. And then again, our, our triangle shape with a little curve down at the end. And then this one is a little further back and we can't see it all, right? So once we get that in, she's sort of, oh, we forgot about this one. And then this talon, this digit coming back. So once you get that in, then you can kind of, again, erase your marking lines. But I'm gonna go in here and give her something to be perched on. Now this part, you can kind of make up whatever you want. But for now, I'm just gonna do kind of a little jagged line right under here and under here, and then another one. So we can see that she's, you know, she's on something. She's not just floating, floating around there. All right, so we're gonna come in here now and flush out this wing. So when you do this, I like to start with sort of the bigger ones. So I'm gonna actually get a pencil that's gonna draw a little bit darker. You can see a little better. So again, I'm gonna simplify, simplify for you. And you can come in here and these wings overlap one on top of the other. So you can kind of continue these shapes up through that wing like this. Just little curved lines. Again, these are, I'm super simplifying for you guys. You're always welcome to go back in and make this, make them like I always say, make it your own. Now up in here, this is like a crazy amount of wing, right? Crazy amount of feathers, I mean. So what I've done in the past is sort of like what we talked about again with the with our alligators, you don't have to, if you want to, you can go in and pattern everything out, but you can also just sort of give a suggestion of these wing, of these feathers, sorry, in here. And remember to include some of that overlapping. And you can kind of make these down here and bring those curved lines up. And that'll sort of give it that, 
that structure, but that's just gonna give you a hint. And the one important thing to remember is you can see these feathers down here are bigger and then they get smaller and smaller as we work up towards the head. So as you do these curved lines to give you that suggestion, you're gonna wanna make them a little smaller as you work your way up. And you can flush this out and add in as much as you want, because that, that would be super cool. So, you know, as much or as little as you want. And you can do the same thing with the back. Just a couple little, you know, in there. And then here again, now I'm gonna do a little shading for you guys, because it's really important with the bald eagles, these markings, right? These distinct white heads and their white tails. Um, and that's what really, really you can get to see them. So first thing, I'm actually gonna go back up here and we're gonna do a little detail with the head. They have these feathers. The head feathers are a lot smaller and you can see Pepper Ann has a little colic, I guess, cowlick. <laughs> colic is what happens with babies when they can't sleep. Cowlick is when your hair sticks up. So, and that kind of gives her that distinct look and then you can even again like we did there with these feathers kind of the almost little points right and then you're going to come around here and sort of do a zigzag line and that'll give it that distinction and you can bring this chest out getting that head between the body so i'm going to use this handy dandy um, type of pencil. This is all an all lead pencil, but you can do this just as easily at home with this pencil shading on the side, um, but I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna make this wing really dark. Like I said, that's gonna push that out. And then the body you're gonna make darker, but not as dark because we wanna be able to see one from the other, right? And then you can go in and kind of, and that's going to give you a nice distinction between the wings in the front and the wings that are kind of in the back there. You know, and you can shade that in. But remember down here, down here, and you can even make that, this tail is actually more sort of at an angle like that, right? We did it to a point. And then we have these tail feathers, these white tail feathers down here, which here again, you can add in some details in. And then the under, the other set of tail feathers, the under feathers, I think they're called, protective feathers. So yeah, so there you go. And you can, again, play with this and go in and, and, and try to make it, you, know, you can do something fun for the fourth, maybe put a little flag back there, or you can put some sky, but here, let me show you, you know, the more you work on it, you know, and you can do some more shading, but here you go, you can see here where I added more of that, those, ooh, sorry, I'm gonna make sure you see that, more of those sort of like horseshoe shapes, I guess as you call them, and, um, you know, little curved lines, and you see how they're bigger down here and they get lighter. And you can also do that method we talked about before, the lifting off, you can take the side of your eraser, you can make it really dark if you wanna get some details in there and uh, lighten lighten up how you can see well, the way the sun is hitting, hitting her and you can see the light bouncing off those beautiful feathers. But there you go, there is beautiful and majestic Pepper Ann. Well, that's it, you guys. I hope everyone had a great time. Thanks again for joining me for another Animal Draw Along featuring uh, beautiful Pepper Ann, the bald eagle from the Phillips Park Zoo. Remember, you can always add more color, add more shading, um, you know, a cool background, really sort of make it your own piece. And I wanna see those pieces. So make sure to post your work in the comments from this video. We're all excited to see what you guys have been working on. I wanna say uh, a quick thank you to Aurora Public Art for hosting me and a thank you to the Phillips Park Zoo for 
loaning us your photography and of course drawing your fabulous animals. And I hope you guys have a great holiday weekend plan, whatever you have on the agenda. And with that, um, please remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, stay creative. Have a great weekend.